Now, mention the word concentration and your thoughts might turn naturally to the US and the Magnificent Seven, but there's a story to tell about concentration in the UK too. Michael Bourne from our manager research team joins me now to discuss all that and more. Michael, thanks for your time. Um, just starting with the basics, what's the situation with the US and concentration? Yeah, sure. So I mean, it's 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 something where, where where you've seen a lot of reporting. You know, talk talk of the magnificent seven and and, and so forth. Um, that you know the market has become mar like notably uh, more more concentrated in the US. But you know, you've also seen that th throughout throughout markets a a across the world. So yeah, yeah. You know, you're seeing these 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 top stocks in primarily in in technology oriented sectors um, really becoming a larger part of the index and performing so well they've been really driving driving the market. Sure, but there is, as I said, there's a story to be told here about the UK which has its own uh, concentration story and it, its own concentration risk. Tell me more. Yeah, that, that, that's right and um, I mean the UK has always been, you know, uh, really a concentrated market it's, it's it's had those kind of you know those big mining and bank stocks the likes of HSBC Anglo it's etc um, kind of at the top top of the uh, of the food chain uh, for, for for some time um, so you know it's actually it's, it's interesting but e even though you know these are these are not stocks which have benefited from any growth tailwinds they're very value oriented so in spite of concentration actually coming down um, over the last 20 years or so, um, UK is actually still more concentrated than the US market. How interesting. And what, if I may ask, is the impact on fund managers who mm. are trying to navigate that world and produce uh, alpha for their investors? Yeah, so I mean, we've, we've spent quite a lot of time and manager research looking at, at concentration across various markets, actually. Um, and it's interesting that you've really had a style kind of effect. So, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, in, in the US, you've seen kind of growth stocks dominating there. And because there haven't been those sort of growth tailwinds, you know, more value oriented markets like Japan and the UK um, have actually it's, it's, it's fallen. But you've still seen that kind of size effect where where the top companies are driving the market. So, I mean, what, what does this mean for, for fund managers? It, it makes it exceptionally challenging, to be honest, because it's basically it's almost impossible to outperform w without holding the top stocks. So, you know, you've seen that in the US anyway, really it's all been about what, do you hold Nvidia? Are you overweight mm -hmm. as to <laughs> how you're performing? And, and to, to some extent that's really been true in the UK. You know, only 30% of the stocks that haven't been in the top 10 have actually outperformed the index since 2022. Sure. Um, surely though, with depressed valuations in the UK, mm -hmm. there is, there are still opportunities out there, or they're not. There's some. There's there's some optimism to be had. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, also I should say, you know, having running up concentration doesn't isn't necessarily a bad thing for investors. Um, but yeah, you know, in in the UK there are lots of reasons to to be optimistic, of, as we've been kind of talking about this this year. Michael, thank you so much. That's great. For more on concentration and indeed concentration risk in the US and the UK. Check out Morningstar's editorial websites globally. Until next time, my thanks again to Michael. I've been Ollie Smith for Morningstar.